Alrighty guys, welcome back to Kohan Duels. We have upgraded over here. You can see my beautiful face. And you can see this lovely banner that I made. I made it all by myself in MS Paint. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for everyone who has commented, who, wa who has watched. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I, it really actually does mean a lot. I just kind of put these videos up just for my own fun. I wasn't expecting anyone to watch them, and the tiny but strong Kohan community has come out, and I've got a lot of comments about people being like, whoa, this is awesome. I never knew people still played this game, um, and definitely been interested in making more videos, so here I am. Uh, I definitely want to start getting back into it, making some more whenever I can. Not going to make any promises of making one video a week or anything like that, but whatever I can do, I'm going to put out there. Um, I got a few games right now. I have an old game with Golmec that I've been waiting to comment on, and we just did a game last night that was a really good game I'm going to comment on. And then somebody else had actually sent me some replays and wanted me to cast those, so I'm going to put those on the list. And then aside from that, I also really want to make a little video just kind of explaining the format of all these 1v1s we've been playing. And by format, I just mean there's a certain starting gold, there's a certain, uh, you know, we start with 575 gold, two Kohans, and there's these five 1v1 maps that I've made, and, you know, I'll probably make more at some point, but that's just a good starting point for this. And they all just have kind of certain conventions and certain patterns on the maps that lead to a specific format and a specific way of playing. As you've seen on some of them, like, you always start off with a gold mine right next to your starting. You always start off... Um, there's always some ruins that have gold near you, and so it's kind of part of the format to, like, know where those ruins are. But anyways, I'll have another video explaining that and showing the maps, and we're just going to get into this right here. A few films. Um, it was one on this one right here. Okay, let's dive into it. So this map is Alskar. Um, we got up here in the north, we got Zizavine Council. Down here in the south, we got Golmec being royalists. Um, Golmec is going for a barracks first build. This looks like he's going to go for a billet build. And up here, we got Woodmill coming first from Ziza. Um, probably just going for a Carpentry Guild kind of build. Both of them getting their settlers out immediately. And let me just show you the map real quick. These are the starting positions. Everyone has their wood right near them. And then this is their 70 gold ruin that's right near them. In both corners, there's a Gowry stronghold. Um, out in the middle here, there's these Draga enclaves. There is iron over there. There is a barbarian village. In the middle here, we got this wood. Um, over to the sides here, we got the slan. We got more gold. We've got gold and stone. We've got another explorable ruin. Um, this is a bigger map. This is 160 by 160. All the other ones are 128 by 128. Um, so this is definitely a map where you can uh, mobile. Having a mobile army is very important. Okay, uh, Ziza over here making his first settlement. Got the Carpentry Guild, getting scouts out, and going for a market, going for that straight econ. Over here, we immediately have barracks into billet and then into an upgrade for Golmec. Um, first settlers are building their settlement. Second settlers are already out. And he's just going to be kind of rapidly expanding as much as he can. Going right into a quarry after that, probably to get his engineers to start getting that. And up over here, scouts are starting to go out. Just one scout. Um, wasn't waited for the party to complete or anything, and immediately in going getting that 70 gold. As I said, that's kind of a big strategy of these maps is um, is the timing of that and just knowing that that's there. Like Before we started the map, both players know that right there, there is this 70 gold explorable ruin to get. Um, Ziza is continuing econ. He's going to turn that market into a bank. This is an iron export. Both of those give a total of plus 15 gold um, bank will too once he upgrades it. Um, so those are kind of the prime econ buildings in this game. Over here, getting a quarry, going right for those engineers. Over here on Golmec side, he does get those engineers from that quarry and starts building gold. He's got his second settlement or his third settlement being built. Nothing yet on his second settlement. Plus 22 econ for Golmec to plus 32 for Ziza. Both are getting their gold mines right now. Um, so Ziza clearly went for a more solid econ start whereas Golmec went for a heavy expansion start, which in time should give him more econ. Um, he also went for that really early billet. Billet is a royalist-only building that makes everyone 33% less and plus 10 gold. So it is a, it's an econ powerhouse. 
um, and a very important part of Royalists so far as I can tell. Um, over here, Quarry into he upgraded this. He's upgraded this. Quarry into Woodmill. Still hasn't got this bank yet, but presumably he's just waiting for the money to do so. And over here, snatch that money. Like I said, these are um, these buried temples give a hundred gold, and it's kind of a long way away over some rough terrain, but it is worth it if you want to send your scouts out to do so. Um, Golmec has not gotten any scouts yet. Sticking on these engineers, starting to get some more wood. I wonder what he's going to do with all that. Because uh, he's got a good amount of wood there. And Ziza over here, still sitting on that market, but going... Yes, this is a build that I do a lot. But Carpenter Guild into Temple... And you'll see the unit that comes out of that. It's four footmen in the front, one archer in the back, one cleric in the back. And it's just all you need is a wood mill and a temple for that. And I've just found it to be a real good powerhouse of an early unit, especially against royalist footmen get uh, plus against cavalry. So when you're fighting lancers and stuff, this is just such a good party. And when you have a Kohan up too. And again, it's cheap. Six wood, one iron. Um, you're getting the iron and the cold of height from the temple so definitely went for oh i'm going for this that's why this barbarian village is a little bit of a pain to take uh it's fairly hard it seeds about 125 gold i believe going for it's probably not going to work with your scouts and engineers honestly that was a misplay uh ziza should have waited for these footmen to be there let's see what happens though he's got the kohan in the back um we've got sarai murasek uh healing kohan and we've got Ravid Sekeri, um, another kind of healing Kohan. But yeah, this attack did not work out. Let's see what Golmec is up to. Golmec has gotten his explorable ruin. He is moving out with scouts and engineers, and he has more settlers. Like I said, going for a heavy settling strategy this game. Um, he just turned that wood into money, went for a wood export there. Pretty good, pretty good. He just went for this, turned that wood into money. Uh, without having to spend as much as an iron export is. Um, this is one thing about this map. There is just the Earth Void in the middle that has some pretty hard guys coming out of it. Um, okay, this sounds fine. And honestly, I actually got rid of that afterwards on this map. Um, I love the idea of having like neutral places like this that kind of represent like it's, it's hard to take. But what happens is that these guys start coming out and attacking at random times, and that just adds way too much of a dice roll to these games that I really don't like. Um, anyways, Golmec over here kind of got destroyed by those guys, and he's just kind of hanging out, presumably doing some stuff back here. Got his settlers up, getting his first lancers up um, with that blacksmith there. Golmec is at plus 54, and Ziza up here is at plus 59. Econ pretty close, and this is the unit I was talking about. Um, this is a pretty standard early army for Council, at least as Ziza plays. Um, engineers, scouts, footmen. He's going to go back and try again for that barbarian village. Or he might go for the Gari. He could easily take that Gari at, right now with this um, with this army. But yeah, not much more has happened in terms of building. His first settlement became Carpenter Guild into Econ Buildings. His second settlement became, became Carpenter Guild, Quarry for Engineers, Temples for that party. So kind of splitting up an econ settlement and a military settlement. Going up here for the Gari, he's going to be able to take it pretty easily. And that will put him at three settlements. Over here, these guys are heading out. And we have one, two, three, f one, sorry, one, two, three, four, four Golmec. Uh, Golmec goes over here. Oh, he is inches away from discovering that. Um, scouts and Lancers coming out. And more settlers. He is going such a heavy strat settler strategy. Because he can do so with the billets. Uh, the billets are making his settlers cost a lot less, especially with the Kohan. And it's such a big map. And Ziza has not shown any aggression so far. Um, so he's doing the right thing by just trying to take control of this map early on. Um, up here, this is about to get taken. And we have more settlers coming out for Ziza too. 55 to 50, again, pretty neck and neck. Golmec is starting to move out here with Lancers and Scouts. Settlers are almost up for Ziza. These scouts are coming back, and it was taken. Immediately, with these four component neutral cities, getting a carpentry guild 
first off is usually a good idea, especially for this strategy where a lot of your army is being made up of this footman company. And always wanting more scouts and such. Um, same army composition for Ziza, but he has gotten himself up to plus 67. And getting that other settlement, um, going for a mining post there. And what's he going to do with this carpentry goal is the big question. Is it going to start to be into some military buildings, or is it going to continue to up his econ? We have Golmec over here hanging out in the middle, just starting to poke around, see what's happening, and starting to gain that map control with his mobile units. Um, this cavalry is just going up to see what Ziza is doing. Um, Ziza is going to attack these guys again. Uh, still might have been foolhardy. I think he might win this, but with Golmec coming up from the back, scouts... That is an immediate retreat from Ziza. Um, still standing there with a the footman in. Look at this. The party's barely taking any damage because of that cleric and because of the Kohan. Um, but Golmec is capitalizing on this, bringing his guys around. Those scouts run, but Lancers are here. And will they win? Probably not. These footmen are just so good against Lancers. You can see that they have plus five against cavalry. Um, they're getting that awesome stuff from the Kohan. And it's a close battle here. Very close battle. Um, Golnek is going to have to run away, I think. Definitely stopped Ziza from running over it, but the end result is still going to be... Oh, and the scouts intercept. Are they going to be able to kill off one of these parties? This would be huge. Oh, can the... Oh, the Kohan's getting away. These Lancers are forced off. Those scouts coming from the rear, I honestly didn't even see happening. Um, that was great, and that's kind of a great use of what you can do with scouts. These scouts are trying... Yep, trying to chase these guys down and get rid of this company. And Ziza is going to take this barbarian village, and that's going to give him some more gold. He is sitting on a lot of gold right now. Um, going for a bank, going for econ buildings in that Gari. Going for an iron there. What's he going to do with that iron? Either it's going to be an export, or he's going to start putting it to military. Um, so far, his game has been an econ game. Um, at plus 91, he's doing pretty good at it, too. Golmec here is at plus 78, so also pretty respectable, doing well. Has horse archers out. And these lancers... Oh, is going to go down. These scouts are just chasing this lancer until his death. And took out that party. Um, Golmec now has here more scouts being made, horse archers. No lancers about, but more settlers. He is just expanding heavy as much as he can. Hasn't taken that barbarian, but... He's at one, two, three, four, five settlements, more settlers out. He got that at some point. That's good. Um, plus 60 for Golmec. He must have built something new recently that put him down. Oh, I'm sorry. That is plus 60. No, no he just got back up to plus 78. Oh, he just got his first goons out. That's why. That would explain it. Armory Guild billet and those goons are fucking cheap. His, I think his priority now is just going to be building iron in... Oh, and these scouts doing more harassment. Scouts are just so amazing for harassment. They're cheap. They're quick. You can just get them out and stop stop settlers from going out like that. Uh, come up from behind and stop running away units. Um, but with these horse archers shooting them down, they're going to have to get the hell out of there. And up here, we got another... Nope, this is the same party of footmen. We have more settlers coming out for Ziza. And went for a temple here. I wonder what that's going to be for. Um, so did the bank, but didn't go into iron export. He's sitting on some iron right now. And he upgraded this into a city. Very interesting. And going for this iron deposit. It's looking like Ziza is thinking about starting to get some more military kind of stuff right now. Um, 95 to 66 is a pretty big advantage in econ. But as you can see, with horse archers, goons, engineers, and scouts... And this is what I was talking about. Uh, these guys from the middle just came and destroyed one of Golmec cities out of nowhere. And that was that's just the stupid luck factor of having these kind of things in the maps, which is why I've, I've been taking them out. It's just that it could have just as easily gone up and attacked my undefended place. And just by dumb luck, it attacked Golmec. He lost that city, and that is such a pain in the ass. Um, immediate low, immediately, though, he is getting more settlers. Not going to let that stop him. Um, what's he building in all his new settlements? Oh, over here, we got them coming out again. It looks like Goldneck is finally just going to take care of this. Um, yep, like I said, getting Blacksmith there. He's probably going to start doing, yep, getting a Blacksmith there too. That's exactly the right play. Um, just keep settling, keep getting Blacksmiths. Don't worry about upgrading these places for now. You're just getting the passive gold bonus, the map control bonus, and then getting that iron bonus. And back up to plus 12 pretty quickly. He's probably going to get some more goons if I had to guess. 
Um, hasn't started to go to cities yet to start to get leads, but that's fine. It's pretty early for that. Um, so over here, Ziza did find another settlement here, and keeping with the econ. Plus 120 is a strong econ. Um, close to double, not quite double, but plus 75 to 120 is a big econ advantage. And very good. Golmec takes that middle. That's like 250 gold or something. He is sitting on a lot of gold right now from that. Um, Ziza coming here with his small army, poking around, sees Dragoons. He's going to get the hell out of there. These horse archers are going to come up, and they're going to hurt more but i think oh man that was bad routing um i still think these engineers are going to be able to get out but um a clear advantage for golmec right now if he would choose to attack and it's getting close to that point the armies are getting closer both players are moving out um as you can see golmec kind of has this area oh and over here oh nice um, like I said, Golmec pretty much has map control at this point. No one has like total map control or anything, but with more mobile units and with more expanding, he has a bit more freedom to do stuff like that. Um, these guys still moving out over here. So this was a huge play. Uh, um, he's getting that extra stone, that extra gold, putting him to plus 81 against plus 15. So it looks like Ziza spent some money recently. Get that iron up. Oh, up here. This was This is huge. Okay, this is... The military kind of coming out in force. Got the blacksmith there and built three parties, it looks like. Yep. Three parties comprised of these Gari anvils and some clerics in the back. One cleric, one cleric, two clerics. So this is going to be the brunt of his army. He's having a not particularly mobile but strong melee army that is going to be able to win a war of attrition. Um, but it's against Golmec's very mobile army. Two goons, horse archers, scouts. And over here, we have Ziza going for the Straga. He's going to continue expanding. He's got two two footmen party there. It's honestly hard to tell what's going on here. Oh, no. It's still just footmen, engineers, and scouts. That same, uh, that same trio of companies that has been with him since the beginning is continuing to take out neutral cities around the map. Over here, these annoying guys coming out. Um, these guys were just moving press position, so didn't even take part in the battle. The military, the militia was able to take them out, though. Okay, so with that, we have Ziza at 118. We have Golmec at 85. It's closer. It's closer. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six settlements for Ziza versus one, two, three, four, five, six for Golmec. It is tied for settlements. Um, Ziza has taken those neutrals, which Golmec has not. And that's kind of put him in standing with Golmec's ability to just make more settlers and to settle more around the map. Um, this part of the map has just been completely ignored. Ziza went here early and got this, but the no one has touched the Slan yet. No one has gone over and gotten this boon. Um, Golmec has not taken his Gari yet. So Ziza's kind of... This top of the map here has this little crescent. And then Golmex just kind of has this whole area. Oh, and a little bit of harassment. Ooh, nothing worse than that. Um, Golmex saw the opportunity, or thought he saw the opportunity, to start moving over and claiming this land. Since he already had the outpost over here, he knows the Kuldahite is there. He knows that Slan is there. But at exactly that time, Golmex, or Ziza, I'm sorry, moves out with its trio, intercepts the settlers, destroys them, and Golmex is pissed. Golmex is coming here. And he has this whole army. Ziza can't do shit about this. Um, over here, Ziza's army, completely out of place. Um, he has this pretty immobile army. I mean, they have a movement of 16. And they are over here way on the other side of a large map. And there's just no way that Ziza's going to be able to take this army right now. Um, horse archers are mismicered up front, but it doesn't matter. This is just kind of a move in um, while well, he's going to be focusing on other stuff. Ziza's scouts destroyed. There's just no way he's going to, to win this. He's probably going to just start selling this stuff. Um, we're starting to get some... I don't know exactly what that library is for, but probably to start getting... Yep, start getting more call to hide for more anvils. Um, anvils are coming in from behind, and they're going to decide to stop and just take the settlement, it looks like. It's the kind of thing where it's like, okay, you're taking my settlement. I can try to chase you and lose that battle, or I can just make you come to me. And that's exactly what Ziza's doing here. He's going to be able to easily take the settlement, and Golmec is going to have to respawn. Uh, Golmec does take this city. Uh, get away, get away. Golmec does take the city, but he moves most of his army to deal back to deal with this threat of anvils. And this is a strong army. I really like the anvils. 
Um, he's just going to have to make sure they're, they don't get caught out of position against this cavalry coming from Golmec. Um, they retreat without having done that much damage. They killed a bunch of militia, but that's about it. Um, goons and horse archers were able to just come back very easily. So we have that. Ziza's army is a bit split. He has a good army, though. Um, he's got more footmen coming out to deal with all his cavalry. He's got more anvils up over here. He's starting to suspect that Golmec might be pushing forward. And so putting an outpost there, I think, is a pretty good play. Um, plus 96 to plus 89. So Ziza's economy has gone down in the last 10 minutes. Uh, Golmec hasn't really changed much. Pretty much all the money he's been making is just been putting into more military. And the first elites coming out. Wow, I did not even notice that happening. He had gotten this to a city. And again, he already had the start with the armory guild and the billet. So he had the start. Um, he needs these four, four elites. Barracks, blacksmith, temple, and library. And he just went for the city and immediately got those two. Wow. Um, this is scary. And this is a an interesting question for royalists. When you get your elites, what do you do? Do you just put elites and rangers in the back so they are con they continue to be mobile, or do you put some of the better units in the back? Um, I probably would have not put a cleric in the back. Paladins will drop your movement. The movement of a company is always equal to the lowest movement unit. Um, so with paladins, you could have kept it at twenty. Putting the cleric in there, you put it to sixteen, and it's gonna be like again compared to thirty-two, it's gonna be a powerful, powerful army. But it makes them slow and kind of not as mobile anymore. Okay, going for the attack over here. Those horse archers end up in front. Um, this micro, but they're moving back and getting right into position. And we got scouts. We have dragoons. We have more dragoons coming up, and we have the leads. This is a scary army. Ziza is not microing effectively here. He has guards that are standing in the back, finally getting into the battle. They should really retreat back into the militia, if nothing else. Starting to do so is, if you heard me, um, scouts are coming in from behind, and again. Three good parties over here that really are needed are caught out of position. They are on the other side of the map. Ziza is split right here with his army kind of over here and over here. If Golmec is able to just kind of use his mobility to go back and forth and just keep Ziza chasing him, he's going to have a really good time in this battle. Um, Leets are up front. They are just doing a shitload of damage. Ziza is not going to win this battle right here. He is going to have some reinforcements coming up from behind. But is it going to be enough? Is it going to be in time? Um, meanwhile, Ziza is just spent a shitload of money on something to try to be able to fight this army. He is down lower in economy. Golmec is now up in economy and I would say up in um, military for sure with those leads and with everything he's putting out. Um, two grenadiers here, some with crossbows in the back. This is clearly just a, a last ditch, not a last ditch, I'm not going to say it's over yet, but this is just like an, an effort to sacrifice a bunch of econ to get enough. Um, scouts coming up from the back and we have these footmen and Gari coming up from the back too. This should help. This really should help. Uh, Golmec did end up taking the city. If these guys were able to come and pincer them, the footmen are going to be able to do a lot of damage. Um, Golmec's army has gotten hurt a lot from this battle. The elites, if he takes out one more elite, it's going to be a pretty manageable party. And these Gari's doing a lot of damage. Like I said, it's a good army. It's a strong army. Those Gari anvils, I believe they just cost, what is it? Yeah, one iron, and they're pretty strong. Um, easy to get, especially with that Gari enclave in the back. Okay, and look at this. Golmec's army is falling apart. Um, they are retreating. Scouts destroyed. Engineers destroyed. These horse archers are going to get out. And that was a bloody battle. These goons are going down. Cavaliers going down. So that was huge losses for Golmec. He did end up taking the city, but Ziza's going to be able to take it back. Uh, Golmec's at plus 114 and Ziza's at plus 61. So, I mean, he's got some money. He's got a shitload of iron, Golmec does, to be able to rebuild from that. Um, this is going to take the city back. Golmec is going to presumably get out of there. These horse archers are just routing in the wrong place. This did go up to a city, and it is becoming a citadel. There we go. ziza has got a citadel, and he has to start thinking about getting elites now because uh, he is behind in that game. And over here, not much more has happened in terms of expanding... Uh, Golmec is down here rebuilding his army. He's got Cavaliers. Elementalists do a shitload of damage with Meteor. More goons, more Cavaliers, more Elementalists. 
And Ziza is preparing for another battle. And it's so hard. Ziza is just... Ziza is between these two. He doesn't know where Golmec is going to attack. Unless he can start to take control of this area, where he can be calling the shots in the middle more, Golmec has control of the middle. And Ziza is going to try to slowly push forward, I think, when he can. But in the meantime, what's going on over here? Oh, these horse archers got caught. Um, they're going to get chased down to their death, presumably. 85 for Ziza. 46 for Golmec. He just spent a lot of cold height. He has won two Cavaliers. Does he have a third coming? No, but just those two. I mean, look how intense. 13 cold height. Both of them are 13 cold height. <laughs> and moving up with the army. Two goons, two Cavaliers, horse archers. This is a strong army. And Ziza is moving in here. Ziza has to make a move. Two Grenadiers, Gori Anvil, and Footmen. That is a strong party. And over here, two Footmen. Engineers are hanging out. These Gari Anvil have got to get back in the battle. And it's a slow-moving um, medium infantry army that Ziza has. And Golmec is going in here with these Dragoons and these Cavaliers. And without having to do much micro, is going to clean up. Um, we do have the army coming in from the rear. This is the big thing right here. But again, out of position. Golmec attacked one side. Ziza has slow units and was not able to get there quite in time. Golmec is just able to completely destroy, at least destroy all the militia from this fort and this outpost. Um, really weakens Ziza's stance. And by the time this army gets in, they're going to do some good stuff. But this army breaks, this company is going to break, if not be destroyed. Um, no, Ravid does win. Or not win, he loses, but he is going to survive. And the army is coming in from behind. The slow army of grenadiers and anvils. Footmen retreat, and they're going to do damage, but look how far in Golmec is penetrating here. If he can destroy those outposts, that outpost in that fort, or that fort at the very least, that will put Ziza behind and make it easier for his next attack. Now, again, he is going to lose this attack. Uh, Ziza's going to hang on here, but Golmec is just calling the shots right now, is kind of the issue. Um... Scouts in the middle of nowhere, and nobody's doing any expanding. Everyone is putting all their effort into this war right now. Um, 87 for Golmec versus 66. If, sorry, I went up to 91. So 60, I'm sorry. 91 for Ziza, 66 for Golmec. So Golmec is falling behind in economy. Ziza does have a stronger economy, and if he can continue to hang on here, that economic advantage might uh, kind of reach a tipping point where it can boost him into the lead. He's got a strong army. It's rebuilding. Now might be the time to attack back, knowing that Golmec's army has been hurt pretty badly. But Golmec is going right back in. He's thinking the exact same thing, it looks like. Mm, nope. Just going and hanging out in the nice sights by the Mystic Springs. Um, continuing to build up army. Continuing to not expand at all. If someone made a move, like going and getting a Slon... Or even just going and getting some extra gold. Something like that. Um, it would... I think that would be a very big boost. Has Royalist Golmec can do that right now. But can he? Oh, Golmec's first horse archers destroyed. I think they were just out in the middle of nowhere. Ziza's moving in. Trying to collect his army. But Golmec is a bit closer than he thought. And so those footmen engage before the rest of the army is really around. These engineers are trying to press forward and do some harassment and some flanking on the side. And here goes this medium infantry army, Gari Hammers and Grenadiers. These guys are trying to run in and attack guys from the back, doing a very good job. They catch that Paladin in the back. Um, they might be able to catch this Elementalist. These Grenadiers are getting destroyed, though. More Gari Hammers. Oh, Hammers are in the battle now, and they're kind of the Dragoons of Gari. And they are running and not being microed at this particular moment, but presumably they will be to try to get behind. And going up here, the infantry army, in this sort of just standard pitched battle where there isn't a huge factor of mobility, where it's just army versus army, Ziza's army is doing pretty good here. Um, he might... No, he's probably not going to take down these Cavaliers. But he's doing a lot of damage to these Cavaliers, destroying the front line. They're going to get away. Ugh, the hammers were destroyed by these Cavaliers. And Ziza's army is starting to break here. All these battles are just such... You're not even sure who's going to win. And then... It just all of a sudden one of the armies starts to break and it starts to become evident. Um, these scouts are probably going to go down. Ooh, the hunter. Golmec the hunter is getting caught here, but is able to fight it off. Golmec is starting to push back, but 
with some extra parties that have been healing up and with that extra militia, I think Ziza is going to be okay here. Um, over here, we got the first lease coming out from Ziza. That's big. That's big. Uh, plus 95 to plus 72. Econs are staying similar. And Ziza has a lot of iron to use up, probably just because he lost those Gari hammers. And a forest retreat here. This is, like, Golmec's army is not much left. In terms of front line, he's got a broken Dragoon party and two broken Cav parties. But he's got all these horse archers in the back. And a fresh Dragoon party priming up from the south. And Ziza is forced to retreat further into his cave. Um, Morgari Anvils, those first bowmen. Ooh, Ravid. Ravid, what are we going to do here? Okay. Golmec is going to start taking out these outposts, and this is just further map control. Golmec is slowly pushing in on Ziza. Um, Ziza kind of had this outer wall of outposts and then this inner wall, and he is being forced back into his inner wall, which means that Golmec is just going to continue to dominate the map. Um, 104 to 45 now. Ziza just put a bunch of money into getting those leets. Uh, I'm not sure if he did anything else, but... Getting his army at the ready here, um, that's five infantry units and elite archers can do something, hopefully. And they're moving out. This is, it's getting to the end of a kind of feasibility that Ziza's going to be able to come back from this. And one big win and the ability to take back this area would get him back in the game. Uh, it would still be a battle from there, but he's getting poised to try because this is his only chance. Uh, engineers poking, and the Gari Hammers, Gari Anvils, I mean, are starting the engagement. More Gari Hammers coming in, and everyone else is a little bit slow, a little bit out of position. Um, those leads are coming in a little later than they should be. Um, if they had started attacking from the beginning of this battle, then that would have been a big advantage. But the battle is just going now. Uh, a tiny bit of an arc here for Ziza, but is that going to be enough? These... Bowmen are doing a lot of damage. Uh, Council Leafs are awesome. I love them. They're one of the reasons why I love Council so much. And they are what is turning the tide of this battle. Because they are untouched. They have been in the back. Pretty much the entire front line got destroyed, but these Leafs have been able to sit there and do damage. Continual damage and break up Golmec's army. But now with no front line, is he going to be able to continue this push? Is he going to... He did. He gets the city. Ravenville is back in the hands of Ziza. He has no army to speak of. And neither does Golmec, really. That is a battle that kind of really depleted both units. But um, both parties, both people, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, these elite bowmen of Ziza are staying strong. They survived the battle. Uh, I wish this game had a kill count, because I can't imagine how many kills they got there. <laughs> and continuing to move to secure this position. Ziza got his iron deposit back, got Ravenville back. 62 to 105, though. He's starting to rebuild his economy. Uh, he has so much coal to hide debt. And what are these guys doing? These bowmen are just going in to try to continue to poke. And he doesn't realize how big the army is here. There's been enough time um, for these guys to recover. He's got a full force archer party. Two short goon parties. Ziza cannot continue to push this, unfortunately. Golmec has had just too much time to recover. A lot of them were able to retreat from the battle early, get back in supply. Um, but he's able to hold us for now. That was a really good push from Ziza. He is still behind in economy. And it's at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven settlements for Golmec versus one, two, three, four, five for Ziza. Golmec is up by two settlements and he just spent a lot of money. Uh, Econ's actually pretty much neck and neck right now, 59 to 62. These are Cavaliers. I have to imagine he just got more Cavaliers. Yeah, that must be these guys coming up. The Hunter is put back into that Cavalier party. And sticking with the Elementalist and the Celebrants. And that is, that is huge, giving guys extra defense and pain. Celebrants are very good. Um, sorcerers are a very good back row unit for Royalists that I would have liked to see more of. Um, Elementalists do a shitload of damage to the meteor, but sorcerers, sorcerers, oh my god. I mean, look at that meteor damage that it's doing, though. Uh, I don't question that decision too much. Anyways, this engagement is happening at the same army as we've been seeing, and these leads are just doing so much damage, continuing to really dictate this battle. Um, infantry unit with a maelstrom engine, 
not enough though. Uh, this medium light to medium infantry army is just getting destroyed, and these new cavaliers are coming up at a really great time. Both armies are destroyed, and a fresh army of leets. It just one fresh company of leets is going to be able to come in here and really turn the tide of this battle. Uh, the rest of Golmec's army is intact enough where he can kind of muster his forces together and take Ravenville right back. And Ziza is forced into yet another retreat behind his first line of outposts. Golmec easily takes back Ravenville. Ziza retreats. What more does he have going? Is he going to try to get... It might be that time to just sacrifice economy and get another party of leets for his only chance to win this game. Um, you get some footmen with a magician and a maelstrom engine in the back. Maelstrom engines are powerful. He, this is just a DPS build and one that can hopefully hold its own and do very well against cavaliers. Settlers destroyed. <laughs> oh, that's funny. These barbarians never got taken care of and those settlers who just tried to go out. Um, so Golmec has the right idea. He's getting settlers. He's, he's at this point where he's like, okay, I've got Ziza pinned. We keep going back and forth, but I have map control and I have more econ. So I'm just, if we keep going back and forth, I'm going to give Ziza a chance to continue to win this game. But if I build settlers and take more map control and get my econ even stronger and just keep Ziza pinned here, then I have no chance of losing this game. So that is, that is the classic macro play and he is doing it flawlessly. Um... Yeah, he's got a lot of iron that he's sitting on. He can easily just get another party of goons, another full party of goons that cost 12 iron and not lose any gold from it. And Golmec is actually going to, uh, perhaps losing his patience with his macro strategy, he's just going to say fuck it and go and attack everybody. Um, again, I really think the correct play would have been to just sit on the floors a little bit, expand, gain his econ, uh, but he's in a good position here. Okay, Ziza's coming here, has a really nice arc, has a lot more footmen units that have been being made, and that three just fucking full footmen units are coming out there for no other reason than just to fight these uh, mobile cavalry units. Because that is what they're best at, and they're cheap. Uh, but that put Ziza at minus 26 wood and plus 13 econ. His econ is nothing right now. He spent everything on a big army. And he is going to let this army rest up and move out as soon as possible and try to do something with it. That is something that you have to do sometimes in Kohan. If you're in a position where you're behind, you can just, as long as you have money saved up, you can just build a bunch of units and your econ goes to shit. You are at negative everything. You're losing money and or you're not gaining any more money, but you got those units out there. And so you can have this really strong military for a short time and you can do that kind of last ditch effort. And that's what Ziza's doing right here. It's so hard to make those calls of, like, when do I move out in a situation like this? Like, everybody's army is constantly fighting and constantly recovering. The more time I give him, the more time he gets to recover, and but the less time I get to recover. So Ziza moves out here. These footmen go right up front, and they're not going to survive long. Uh, they really did need clerics in the back. Uh, if they were not enough. They're very good early game against cavalry, but once you have this much cavalry that you're up against, you might do five more damage per attack against them, but they are just going to clean you up without any extra defense. You need more defensive units against this kind of army. The footmen just get cleared up pretty easily, and they do do a lot of damage. Uh, Golmec's army is taking a lot of damage here, and these bowmen, as always, staying behind and are the main DPS here. And these Maelstrom engines also providing a lot of DPS. But the bowmen were breached. They got, uh, they got charged, and they are dead. Those bowmen are down. And with only 64 gold and a completely decimated army, Ziza does not stand much of a chance here. I think Golmec is going to make his win pretty soon. Um, ended up getting another settlement here. Got those Coldahite fields. Um, Golmec can just take the map at will right now. Um, and he's probably he's going to do so, or he's just going to attack. It's it's kind of one of those things where it's like it would be really hard for Golmec to make an incorrect play at this point. He can either just close in and win the game, or he can take complete map dominance and uh, later on win the game. You know, um, this game's been going on for 52 minutes, which is not completely accurate because it's played at 141 percent. So I don't know what is that, uh, 40 minutes or so. But it's been a long game, 
it's just been this constant battle right here. It was early on what happened is, like I said, there was just getting out of position between these two places. Oh, and uh, Ziza finally decides to get some Dragoons. <laughs> that may help in this battle. And some crossbowmen. He's grasping at straws, just trying to get some army out that can do something. Uh, plus 106, though. Good econ. Starting to move out to see what's happening. And three full Cavalier parties for Golmec. There's literally no way Ziza is going to win this. Um, I think this is done. I think he's going to have to just give up very soon. He is moving behind his outpost. This is the biggest attack that Golmec has made so far on this inner wall of outposts and units. And it looks like it's going to be the last. Um, there's no elite bowmen out to have that DPS. And look at these guys. The Cavaliers are just out front. Uh, not even dying. Not even taking much damage. I don't think a single Cavalier unit has gone down so far. <laughs> Uh, footmen down. It's over, people. I don't know what Ziza hopes he can accomplish at this point. Um, oh, going over here, these Dragoons tried to come in from the back. Uh, they just got stopped. GG noob from Ziza. Golmec is indeed a noob. Look at that. And game over. That was an intense game, and it's just, it's one of those things where it's, that's how a lot of these games go is is just one place where you find that the big battles happen and you're just fighting over that position the whole game and it happened to be right here and again that was closer to ziza's side that was right outside of ziza's gate which means that the battle's happening there ziza could never get out ziza could never move his army over here to come out so golmec was able to just do whatever the hell he wanted all in here he took that wood he took that caldehyte he took this gold and stone he took extra expansions over here. He never got his Gari. But point being, Ziza was not able to keep up with him in that sort of economy. He only had his starting wood and gold. Um, was never able to move out over here. And yeah, Royalists are... The Cavalry Army is a tough one to face, especially on a bigger map like this. This is a very... Uh, this is the largest map that we play with on Kohan Duels. And there's a pretty good amount of open space. And there's some terrain here to break it up. There's these hills... But overall, a mobile army is going to do very good. And if you're not doing a mobile army, you have to know how to counter that. Um, Ziza maybe should not have even... It's just so hard. Like this, The jutting out uh, little rivulet here makes it even harder to move between. So Ziza really had to have gone either, either a bit more forward or a bit more back. Not even build this settlement. Um, really just kind of fortify here and do all of his movement out here. And he could have easily... Just settled this way, got the Gari, got the Draga, and maybe even tried to just build a wall kind of all along here between the mountains and the river. And if he could have taken control of this whole area and just had a strong outpost here, that might have been a way he could have had a semblance of map control even with a less mobile army. But it did not go as such. Golmec played a great game. He expanded like hell. He got this really powerful mobile cavalry army. He did what Royalist does best. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me. I have more videos on the docket to be commented on. Uh, this is really fun. I'm really hoping to be putting out more stuff more often. We'll see how it goes, but yeah, man. I love you all. Thank you so much. Have a good one.